because I'm thinking, do we have to do CPR? What is up? My name is Lindsay. I am a flight attendant. It is 7 10 a.m. in Nashville, Tennessee. We just got here. We worked a red eye all night and just landed at 6. Um, we had a medical, but it's kind of a longer story, and I do want to tell you guys about it, but I'm not going to tell you right now. So when I wake up around 2 or 3, I will uh, finish this story, but I just wanted to say hello and let you know that I am in Nashville. And I have been up officially for uh, 24 hours. <laughs> Excuse me. I have been up officially for 24 hours. I mean, I took a couple of naps here and there, but not full on sleep. So I have yet to sleep. I am going to sleep and get comfy and go to sleep. So I'll see you guys in a little bit and I'll tell you all about the medical. I am awake. I slept so good because they moved us away from the atrium which is all down here let's see how it's like all open so we're usually in these rooms and look there's like a convention i am so glad they moved us to the exterior rooms so i'm heading downstairs i'm going to walk across the street and get some barbecue um our van's at 755 so i'm going to tell you guys the story of our medical on the way so I did bring you guys here uh, during Christmas and it looks like uh, they're having like a little summer fest and it's Smurfs. So maybe after I eat, if I have a little time, I'll run through um, the Opry land, the Gaylord, and we can see what that's all about. Uh, it's 2.22. So as long as I'm back in the room by like six-ish, I should be good. Maybe even 6.30. We'll see. Uh, no time to go downtown today just because we are on a, a day layover, like a 14-hour layover. And tonight, we just do one leg to LA and then we're done at like midnight. And then we do an 18-hour layover and we are done tomorrow. No. Yeah, tomorrow at midnight. Oh God, this the little bush fell in. Ah! Yikes. Oh God, there's more like that. These were definitely not like this the last time I walked through here. All right, so I was gonna start the story, but then I saw two pup pups, so I needed to say hi to the puppies. Uh, okay, so basically, I was lead, or I am lead for this trip. I never take lead because every time I take lead, something happens, and I just never take it. Like we're all like, ja. I am jinxed when I take leave, but I need the money and no one else really wanted it. So I was like, whatever, I'll just do it. So I took it and we had a medical. Basically, we were on our way to Nashville and I was up front and the three flight attendants were in the back because there's four of us. So the three of them were in the back and I heard a call light go off and it's pitch black in the cabin because it's a red eye. So I look down the aisle and I see that one of the flight attendants is getting the call light, so I go back into the alley and eat or whatever I was doing at that point. And all of a sudden, um, one of the flight attendants calls me and she's frantic and she's like, please turn the lights on and page for medical assistance. And I said, what's going on? And she said, we have a woman back here that passed out and she hit her head and she's unresponsive. When you tell me that uh, someone is unresponsive, 
A, that's a little scary because I'm thinking, do we have to do CPR? What What's happening? Oh, I'm really sorry, it's windy. I'm trying to block the wind. Um, do we have to do CPR? Like, I, I there's many things that go through my mind. So I turn the lights on and granted, it's like two in the morning at this point. And everyone's like, oh, what's going on? And I page for medical assistance. No one comes forward at first, but then finally someone rings their call light. And we've had it where there's no one on board, like for medical personnel. And that's really scary because we are trained only the basics, like the basic basics for medical stuff. But we're not trained for like big, big things, you know? So this nurse comes forward and she goes to the back and I call the pilots and I tell them, hey, uh, we paid for medical assistance. We have a woman and she's unresponsive. Uh, she passed out and she's laying on the galley floor. I will start the paperwork. So we have paperwork that we have to fill out when there's a medical. And basically we were this close to diverting because when you tell the pilots that there's someone unresponsive and they're unconscious you need to divert she was breathing she had a very weak pulse i wasn't really all into the medical like hands-on with it because i was up front talking to the pilots and someone has to be up front when there's a medical because a medical could be a ploy for something more it's scary to think about but there are people out there that will fake a medical to get into the flight deck or something. Someone always has to be up front and that's genuinely the lead unless if the lead finds the person. So I'm up front talking to the flight deck. A flight attendant is um, filling out the paperwork and another flight attendant is assisting with the registered nurse and then another flight attendant is just walking through the cabin because it's a red eye and a medical on a red eye you literally go zero to 100 in five seconds because it's a red eye and everyone's sleeping and you're just up there hanging out because there's nothing to do. So it's kind of intense. Basically this woman was unconscious for almost three minutes. I mean, she was breathing, um, but when you tell me there's someone unconscious, it just freaks me out. Cause it's like, do we have to do CPR? Like what, what's happening? So she came to, we gave her uh, oxygen. We went through three bottles of oxygen and then um, our pilots talked to a doctor on the phone and they just told us to give her diluted apple juice and get her into a seat because she was on the galley floor in the back. It's pretty scary, medicals aren't a joke. This is what your flight attendants are trained in training for, we are trained for six weeks on medicals and emergencies and scary situations and there's only maybe four hours of a day one day of training that we do service the main part of our job that we do every day is only focused on like four hours in training so it is very scary but we did great the crew did a great job it's all about communication and working together so we did that we accomplished it Definitely not my scariest medical, but it is scary when somebody says somebody's unconscious because the thought of CPR or diverting or things like that go into your head. So my story, it was really long, but we're here. We accomplished. We're getting barbecue. Barbecue time, sweet potato, cornbread, baked beans, and pulled pork. And here's all your sauces. Yes, honey. Grand old Opry, the show that made country music famous. Ready. Smurf essence. I bet you this is really pretty at night with all the lights. So this is where the Christmas tree was. Ooh, hey there. 
So, um, the summer fest was a dud. I thought it was gonna be more like the Christmas festival that they did here, but it, there wasn't really anything to see. Um, I didn't really wanna walk all the way to the other part of the Gaylord because my stomach is full and I think I need to relax until about 6.30 and get ready to go to work. That's my game plan. Gaylord Opryland. Hey guys, I am ready. I never like show the top of my head. I feel like that's weird because I don't have my little selfie stick. So I have to use my arm as my selfie stick. I need to reattach that. I'm just finishing getting ready. I need to put my lipstick on. <sighs> my camera's gonna die! Okay, just wait. Don't die. If you die, I'm sorry. So, here it is, folks. Uh, working one leg to LA, and then we have 18 hours there. And I am going to see Eddie. And we're having a good time. I um, ordered a salad from downstairs. Oh, I really like this color. It's in the shade Fox Glove by Becca. Mm, it's cute. So I'm gonna go downstairs and I ordered a salad and then we are taking a 755 van to the airport and heading to LA. So I will probably see you guys um, in LA. Maybe I can get you on the plane. We'll see how my camera operates. Hey guys, in LA, and we're by Eddie's apartment, and we're getting, there's a food truck we saw when we were driving by uh, called Poutine Brothers, so we're gonna get some poutine. Just kidding, it's not open yet. They opened up. There it is right there. What is poutine, eh? A Canadian classic featuring french fries, cheese curds, and brown gravy. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> Savory chicken. Yes, please. Okay, and we got this one. So we're getting two. We got two. This is the hangover. It has a fried egg with ham and tots and curds and gravy and chives. And that one has chicken and curds and fries and chives and gravy oh my god I just got diabetes hi I'm back to my hotel and I'm going to start getting ready our van is at 435 it's about uh, almost four ish uh, I showered and everything and got ready this morning all I have to do is throw my uniform on and go to the van one leg to Minneapolis get in at midnight and then we um, are done and I'm done until next Sunday and then we start a new month of flying. Yeah, so this trip, this three days, it was just kind of, it was a really working trip. So we had very minimal time in Nashville and minimal time in um, LA here. Unlike last week when I had 30 hours in LA and this week I only have 18. So very minimal time, but that's okay. It's really gloomy out. I'm gonna show you guys. Look how it's just very, nasty outside but that's okay because we were very productive today Eddie and I had a lot of stuff to do that we needed to get done here in LA and yeah busy bees busy bees keep you guys updated with all that stuff later on in another vlog